So now it's Bren Spillane. Spillane was a third round pick in 2018 by the Cincinnati Reds. The tall righty will take one outside for ball one. This is another guy who has played very well in recent games. In his last five games, three home runs, 10 RBIs, and seven runs scored. He has a chance here to give Windy City the early lead. A 1 0. Taken low and away for ball two. Even though Kevin Holcomb does have those two strikeouts, control has been a little iffy here to start off. Well, he's 50 50 with his balls and strikes by my count. 20 total tosses and 10 strikes. It's a 2-0 count. Martinez at first, Boone at third. Here's the pitch. Spillane misses that low fastball. Four strike one. For Holcomb's last start, it was only a fourth and a third of an inning. And something we saw was Nathan Holt piggyback off of that, a guy who has starter stamina but has been coming out of the bullpen, and we might have to see that tonight just with how well Windy City has been able to work the pitch count. Two one pitch. Spillane gets that one deep left field on the move as Owings, and he can't grab that one because it is out of here. Spillane will touch them all. It's a three run shot in the Nordson lawn, and just like that, Windy City leads three to zero. Well, there really wasn't much doubt about that. And he did get just enough of it to send it over the wall based on the body language of Connor Owings and left. He kind of took a few steps back, acting as if he was going to try and play that off the carom. But Spillane had just enough air underneath that one to send it out. Well, he first hit that. I didn't think there was going to be a question. <laughs> he sounded yeah, great um, off his bat. Home run number 11. And now has 34 RBIs on the year. Brian Klein now. Klein. Takes a high pitch for ball one. And this is the most runs Holcomb has given up in any start now. We're only here in the first inning. Three runs on two hits. And both of those hits have come with two outs. The 1-0. -oh. And that off-speed pitch doesn't come close for ball two. If you're just joining us, just getting started here with Windy City facing off against the Lake Erie Crushers. Holcomb started off the inning off strong with a strikeout. So here's the 2-0, and Klein will foul that one straight back. Then Jake Boone, he drew a four-pitch walk. Holcomb bounced back with a backwards K on Dan Robinson, but Bryn Martinez, a two-out single up the middle, and Brent Spillane goes power on the right-hander, takes it in Nordson Lawn, and that's where we stand. The 2-1 pitch, two outs. And Klein takes that outside for ball three. This is kind of what you worried for Lake Erie, a team who they should beat the Windy City Thunderbolts, but the T-Bolts, they've been playing pretty well in terms of just hitting the ball. And we saw it right there. So here's the 3-1. And Klein will take a drive on that one. That one's deep right field. That one's up. That one is gone. Back-to-back -back home runs for Windy City. Brian Klein will touch them all, and now it is four to zero. Got enough of that one, almost hit the scoreboard. But for Brian Klein, that's home run number two in seven games. The way Najee Gaskins was going after that, it looked like he may have a play at that. He actually banged into the wall as he was attacking that, but as you mentioned, that just missed hitting that lower right panel of the scoreboard out there in right center field. Really tough start for Kevin Holcomb. And that pitch count continuing to rise. He's at 27. Mark that down as three consecutive two-out hits. And that first pitch is a called strike on Matt Morgan. Back-to-back -back home runs. That's something we have rarely seen here this year. The 0-1. That one's low for ball one and. Kevin Holcomb, the long ball has been an issue. Coming into tonight's start, he's given up three and two starts. And now mark that five. And he's not even done yet here in his third start with the Lake Erie Crushers. 
Here's the 1-1 one, one on Morgan. And Morgan will take the off-speed pitch. It catches the lower part of the zone for a called strike. So 1-2 and two now. The catcher, Morgan. Three RBIs in his last two games. Currently on a four-game hit streak. Five home runs and 20 RBIs on the year. The 1-2. Morgan wave in front of that off-speed pitch. Holcomb gets out of the inning. But not before the big shots by the Windy City Thunderbolt. A three-run home run by Brun Spillane. And back-to-back -back they go because Brian Klein followed up with a solo shot to right field. We'll head to the bottom of the first inning. The T-Bolts, they lead 4-0. Stay tuned as you're watching tonight's game off Flow Sports while listening on Meridix. Four to zero, Windy City here early. Lake Erie, they still have the bat. Jack Thiel alongside Andy Bull Bart. Thank you all for tuning in to tonight's action. Obviously not the start Lake Erie wanted, Bull, but I think the good thing and the positive outlook is there's nine innings to play. Plenty of time to make up those four runs, but they do have their work cut out for them. This is an offense that's going to try and turn some things around. That's a series that over the weekend in Joliet where they had a tough time scoring some runs. It's going to be hard because Kenny Matthews has been on a different level in the month of August. We'll go over those numbers after the first pitch by number 14. Owings takes the called strike to begin the bottom of the first. But for Kenny Matthews, three starts in the month of August. He's 3-0. and He's only given up one run in 15 innings, 21 strikeouts to four walks. And that off-speed pitch <laughs> beautifully thrown and way, way in front is Connor Owings. That read at 64 on the pitch radar on our scoreboard. I know it's a little off, but I mean, you could see just the break on that pitch. 0-2. Oh, Owings swings at that one, lifts it near the line in left field, and it will not be caught because it's out of play and foul. Looked like trouble at first. He flared that down that left field line, and Dan Robinson didn't look like he was going to catch up to it, but fortunately for Kenny Matthews and company, that tailed foul and into the seats. And as we mentioned, Kevin Holcomb, very patient, slow on the mound. Kenny Matthews, very fast and quick paced on the mound. And he's already set to no two count as Connor Owings steps in the box. Lefty lefty matchup. Positions playing normal death. That one misses high for ball one. Let's go over the defense forward to Windy City Thunderbolts. You have Dan Robinson in left, Bryn Martinez in center. And in right field, you got Jarius Richards. Here comes the one-two. Owings waits back on that one, and that's past the first baseman for a base hit. Connor Owings, this time, he waited back on that off-speed pitch, and Lake Erie now. As a runner on, and you mentioned it, ball a lot of time for Lake Erie to come back. And that's a great approach by Connor Owings. As you mentioned, he was able to wait back on that, and he yanked it to the right side of the infield, shot it right by the diving Peyton Robertson in first base. We'll see if the rest of this offense can follow suit here and do some damage against Matthews. 
Quickly thrown. That misses outside. Four. Ball one. But from third to first, you have Boone at third. Kaler at short. Klein at second. Robertson at first. And Morgan is your catcher. Had to speed that up a little bit. The 1-0. And Thomas Rivera way, way in front of that off-speed pitch. Four strike one. And seems like that's going to be the big definer. And Kenny Matthews start here today is can they wait back on that off-speed pitch? 1-1, one, one, throw back the first, actually. Owings back in time. He throws a lot of strikes, too, so you kind of have to be aggressive. You can't take too often early in the counter. You'll fall behind. I think what's important to notice is here's the 1-1. One, one. Thomas Rivera way behind that fastball, four strike two. It's not just an off-speed pitch. I mean, the break and the difference in miles per hour between a fastball and that pitch is really noticeable. 1-2. And Kemwell Thomas Rivera can't catch up to that fastball. Four strikeout. Number one for Matthews on the mound and out number one here in the first. And they hit the spot they were looking for. The catcher, Matt Morgan, raised his glove way up in the zone there. Before that pitch was delivered, they hit the spot as Kemwell Thomas Rivera just could not climb the ladder fast enough. So now Jackson Valera. Valera has played a lot of in terms of the batting order in the two-hole, but move to the three tonight. Currently on a three-game hit streak, the first baseman is. Valera takes an off-speed pitch for a called strike. And for our listeners that couldn't see this, Valera had an interesting reaction when he turned back to the dugout, not knowing how to react to that off-speed pitch. 0-1. And Valera waits back. That gets past the hole between the third baseman and shortstop for a base hit. So Connor Owings will stand at second. Valera at first, two men on and one out. A lot of similarities between what Owings did in the first at bat and what Valera did a few moments ago. Waited back on the off-speed pitch, and he was able to yank it to the left side of the infield. So now the Crushers set themselves up here with a chance for the middle of the order to do some damage and slowly battle back here and chip away at this deficit. Both hits have been on the off-speed pitch. Now it's Keaton Irizarry. Irizarry, four RBIs in the last three games here at home. And he takes a fastball inside the zone for a called strike. Hits in five of the last six games. And overall, this has been a guy who produces when runners are on. 0-1 oh, from Matthews. And Irizarry will file that off the shin of the catcher Morgan. Four, strike two. And it really started when Irizarry was moved to the four hole. You know, early in the year, we saw him flirt with the one, the two, maybe the three. But the past month, Keen Irizarry has been a constant piece in the cleanup spot. 0-2, off-speed pitch, Irizarry fooled. Matthews beautifully twirls that one in for the second out here in the first. If he could continue to spot his breaking ball like that, it's going to be a real long night for the Crushers. Kenny Matthews, for the most part, has kept the Crushers off balance in this first inning, and he has been able to work wonders with that breaking ball. Now it's Austin White, number 15, one of the hottest hitters for Lake Erie. A six-game hit streak for the center fielder. He also has four RBIs in the last five games. Got two runners on, Owings at second, Valera at first. That one's low, four ball, one. Interesting story. We kind of mentioned it in the last broadcast, but if you can watch the game, you might notice, but if you're a listener, you don't see this. As here's the 1-0. White takes that pitch for a call strike, but Austin White writes his mother's initials on the turf near the batter's box. Now, Tom Myros told us that, and he also told us that his mom was supposed to be here. I don't know if it was for this series or the Washington series. As Austin White will plop that one in the center field. Owings will round third and go home. A throw at the plate. Not in time. And just like that, Austin White extends his hit streak to seven. Mark that down as five RBIs in the last six for number 15. Lake Erie, they cut into that deficit. It's four to one. And that'll give this offense at least a little bit of confidence. As we talked about before, you don't have to make all four of those runs up at once. But I think if you're Cam Roth, you've got to be pleased with the fact that your offense was able to give you some sort of response to that four spot in the top of the inning. Three hits, all singles from Lake Erie. Now it's DJ Stewart. And Stewart takes that off-speed pitch high and away, four ball one to third baseman. 
was acquired last week, but in six games, he has recorded five hits. A 1-0. That off-speed pitch catches the zone for a called strike one. Stewart, he played DH for the first two games of that home final home stretch against the Schaumburg Boomers. Then he was moved to third base. 1-1, Stewart lines at the left field, and it's going to trail out of play and foul. It was loud off the bat, but just couldn't keep it fair. And now the count will turn one and two on the DH, or third baseman, I should say. You have Valera at second, Austin White at first, who drove in Connor Owings with this RBI single. The one, two. Call strike three. Matthews punches in the fastball. And that's strikeout number three here in the first inning. A couple words between the home plate umpire and Cam Roth as that pitch is thrown. And we're going to head to the top of the second. Lake Erie, they still trail by three, but Austin White helped with an RBI single. You're watching tonight's game on Flow Sports while listening on Meredix. Hi, how are you? I'm good, I'm crocheting. I see that. It started off as a hobby, kind of snowballed from there. And Alex, I don't want to stop. Well, I don't see why you should have to. Let's set you up with a side gig savings goal on the US Bank mobile app. This way you can turn it into your main hustle before you know it. You're my hero, Alex. What are you working on now? Pool cover. That's fun. Oh, I made my wife a bathing suit. Oh, did Linda like it? She did not. Oh. You should see what I made for Max. Max, look at him. He loves it. The confidence to make your dream a reality. U.S. Bank, we'll get there together. At Mercy Health, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Whenever you shop Meyer, you don't just feed yourself or your family. You help support programs like Simply Give, that feed our neighbors in need. Thank you. This tiny payment thing is a giant pain. Hi, ladies. Alex from US Bank. Can she help? How about a comprehensive point of sale system that can track inventory, manage schedules, and customize orders? That's what US Bank Business Essentials is for. What about a new oven? Can U.S. Bank help us there? We can serve loans in as fast as 12 minutes. That would be a big help. Huge. Jumbo. Ginormous. Woo! Woo! Finding ways to make your business boom. That's what U.S. Bank is for. We'll get there together. A lot of offense just for one inning. It's 4-1 Windy City. Jack Thiel alongside Andy Bull Barch. They'll be the 8, 9, and 1 hitters for the T-Bolts. With Cole Kaler set to lead things off. Kevin Holcomb still on the mound for the Lake Erie Crushers. Giving up a season high four runs and a start just in one inning. Kaler will take his time at the plate. Sets his feet. Holcomb on the mound. Gets set and ready to deliver the first pitch here in the second. And that will catch the bottom part of the zone for a called strike. And bowl for Kevin Holcomb, how do you respond after giving up four runs in one inning, including two home runs that were on two outs? I'll add to that after his next pitch because it looks like he's ready. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the 0-1 from Holcomb. And that one will be chopped foul to the right side. Exactly what he's doing, getting ahead early and finding a way to finish off batters that he gets ahead of. He threw 31 pitches in that first inning, so he's got to find a way to be a little more efficient. A ball from the Windy City bullpen gets passed, and really interesting to see action already. Nevertheless, it's a righty warming up for the T-Bolts, and it's a no 2 count on the shortstop, Cole Kaler. Holcomb takes his time, the two-strike pitch. That one's low, and it bounces in front of the plate for ball one. He looked at the turf there near his landing spot as soon as that ball spiked about two feet in front of home plate. wonder if maybe he had an issue with where he came down on the turf. I do have an interesting story about Kevin Holcomb, and I will share after this one-two pitch from the righty. Takes a deep breath, the one-two. 
That one bounces in front of the plate once more and off the chest of De La Rosa. Four ball, two now. The last two starts, including tonight when Mulhern has made a start, he has thrown a live game, basically, around 3 or 4 o'clock when the team takes BP. He actually goes on the mound and pitches against his teammates, something you don't really see often. The 2-2. Two -two. Kaler slams that one up center field. Austin White made the running grab. Read that one perfectly, and, man, the wizard, you can call him out there for out number one. It's amazing how this is only his first season playing at this ballpark. I mean, Austin White didn't take much time at all to adjust to the confines here because it always seems like he never gets fooled. As soon as that ball leaves the bat, he gets an incredible jump, and he always has a fighting chance at making a ball that's hit in his area in center field. No errors so far for number 15. First pitch down low and away to Peyton Robertson. Robert. Oh. Well, that play like that's a perfect example because if he takes the wrong step or if he hesitates, there's no way he catches that ball. I think we've also seen multiple times for Austin White not being able to make the play, but he's being able to do something productive. And that one's taken low for a called strike. For Austin White, it's this is game number, if I'm correct, this should be game number 57 or 58, I should say. So 58 games, including a night and no errors so far. The 1-1, Robertson takes that off-speed pitch for a ball. Barely missed. So the count turns 2-1. The activity in that bullpen is very surprising. 2-1. Robertson takes that one low and away. Four ball three. It is a righty. Can't really tell who it is from our angle, but I mean... Three hits, one run for the Crushers. You don't, you didn't really think that would initiate any type of activity in the bullpen. That 3-1 misses high for ball four. So Peyton Robertson works himself a one-out walk, and the lineup card will go back to the top of the order for the leadoff man, Jarris Richards. From here, Jack, that looks like number 26, Ryan Miller, who's getting loose. And the manager for the Thunderbolts, Brian Smith, who's also coaching third base, like many managers in this league do, was actually checking his lineup card and was looking over at that Lake Erie dugout as well. So I'm not sure if he's anticipating a move in the bottom of the second or not, but the wheels are spinning that direction. First pitch to Jairus Richards. And that's inside on Richards near the ankles. Four ball, one. Richards, he struck out in the first inning. I mean, you would have to wonder what is initiating at least the thought of having a pitcher warm up in only one inning. He didn't throw a lot of pitches. I mean, the only he didn't get hit that well. I mean, he only gave up three singles. The 1-0 on the move is the runner. That's popped up high in the sky. He'll retreat back to first. DJ Stewart, he will make the grab for out number two. It's a two-pitch out. And that officially makes that the shortest battle at the plate put together by a T-bolt batter so far tonight. So that's exactly what Holcomb was looking for. Not finished with this inning just yet as he's got to face a guy in Jake Boone. He walked out of four pitches his last time up. Jake Boone, he drew a four-pitch walk last inning in the first. And then he later score on that spill lane, three-run shot to left field. You have Peyton Robertson, who stands at first. He was on the go on that play, but had to retreat back the pitch. That one's low and away and past the catcher, De La Rosa. That will allow Peyton Robertson to advance the second. So that's going to be a 1-0 count and now a runner in scoring position. Well, still an opportunity for him to get out of this inning kind of quickly despite issuing that five-pitch walk to Robertson. If he can find a way to get Jake Boone, a guy who's had himself a, a decent trip, he's coming off a four-hit series in Gateway. So Jake Boone, he was drafted in 2017 in the 38th round by the Nationals, but decided he, won't, he wouldn't sign with them. The 1-0 to Boone, and Boone under that one. 
Floats that up in the right field. Gaskins right there. And he makes the grab for out number three. So the one-out walk does not hurt. Holt come on the mound. He throws himself a scoreless second. We'll head to the bottom of the second. You're watching tonight's game off Flow Sports while listening on Meridix. The Windy City Thunderbolts, they're going to introduce a new pitcher here in the bottom of the second. It's going to be the right-hander, Ryan Miller, out for his 15th appearance. He does have two starts on the year, but overall for Miller, he's given up 25 runs in 25 innings. He has an 8.64 ERA. Now, for Kenny Matthews, we don't know the exact problem is why he was taken out of the game, but he was taking a look by our trainers here on the Lake Erie Crusher, so something might not have been 100% for the lefty. Nevertheless, Miller is now in control on the mound, and his first pitch is through the wickets of the catcher, Morgan, for ball one. Very, very strange because, again, when he walked off the mound, there was not much that we could see no. that would indicate that he was in any kind of pain. Sean Cheely, the batter, 1-0. Chile gave it a little check, but holds back, and the count will turn 2-0. Yeah, I mean, that's just something odd, and this could really tax the bullpen of the Thunderbolts. Started aim, starter who is having one of the most impressive August in the league only pitches one inning, and Chile takes that one inside near the feet for ball three. Sean Chile, he did not play in that Schaumburg Boomer series. Now, he did play in a couple of games against the Joliet Slammers, but... This is the first time in almost over a week that he's played at Mercy Hill Stadium. And Chile takes a four-pitch walk to start off the second inning. Just like that, a runner stands at first. And for Ryan Miller, it's just really been not the best year so far. A guy who, like you mentioned, has started, but majorly has been used for those bullpen rolls. And in his last start, gave up five runs on three hits. And only an inning in the third against the Gateway Grizzlies on August 20th. Three home runs were hit by the Grizz. Well, being thrust into a game in the second inning. That's always a challenging situation. Here's Brian De La Rosa. That first pitch is low. That allows Chile to advance the second. It was way out of the zone by Miller. So Chile now stands at second. And 
you can see some obvious command issues for Miller on the mound. And if you're Brian De La Rosa, you have to be thinking there's no way I'm swinging until he can prove that he can throw a strike because he's thrown five straight balls to start his outing here. De La Rosa's probably upset. He's been the hottest hitter for Lake Erie. And it's kind of odd to say just due to the fact that he's been cold up to this front. And that one's outside for ball two. But for De La Rosa, there's really something Cam Roth has been wanting to see from him. The bat has been coming around for the catcher. Hits an eight of the last nine game, and he has four RBIs in the last four games. So Chile stands at second. It's a 2-0 count on De La Rosa. That one's low in front of the catcher for ball three. So just like that, six straight balls thrown by Miller as it's for the one Windy City. All of the offenses happen here in the first inning. So we stand in the bottom of the second. Lake Erie trying to cut into that deficit. The 3-0. That one misses high and away, four ball four. Mark that down, eight straight balls throw, thrown from Miller on the mound. You can see he's got pretty good zip on his fastball, but at the same time, he's having a really hard time bringing that into the zone. He's missed high with it quite a bit, and he's tried to sneak a couple of breaking balls in there, but those really haven't turned over the way he was wanted them to. And with eight straight balls, again, I think Gaskins will go out there with the same approach that De La Rosa just did. Keep the bat on your shoulder until you see a strike. Yeah, those eight straight balls inherited a mount visit for Windy City. So Miller and his catcher, Morgan, will talk things over. And Najdi Gaskins, like you mentioned, will be the batter. Wouldn't it be surprised if he just dropped his bat on his shoulders and waited for him to throw a strike? You know, nothing's really been close for Miller. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not like he's nibbling at the corners and barely missing. Most of these pitches really haven't been close. So Chile at second, De La Rosa at first. That one's inside for a ball. Gaskins takes it. Nine straight now thrown by Miller. Coming out from the bullpen, taking over four to starter Kenny Matthews, who left with an apparent injury. one -all. And there's a strike. From the pitcher Miller, the first one thrown for him tonight. The count now one and one on the right fielder Gaskins, recently acquired by Lake Erie. He's hit in four of the last five games, which includes a four-game hit streak. And Gaskins gets under that one, pops that up in the right field. Richards tracks it down. He will make the grab. Chile will tag up from second. He will be safe. De La Rosa stays at first, so runners now will be on the corner with one out. Well, that was a nice cut by the shortstop, Cole Kaler, because a lot of times if that ball goes through on the throw from right field, the runner from first has a chance to tag up to second. But Kaler did a great job of cutting that off, knowing they weren't going to get Chile at third, and that was enough to keep De La Rosa at first. So now it's Connor Owings. Owings. He waited back on that off-speed pitch from Matthews, and... Lined a single in the right field. He later scored on the Austin White RBI single. First pitch. Owings will take that one outside for ball one. Overall, it's been a season to remember for the powerful lefty bat. 19 doubles, 2 triples, 14 home runs, and 55 RBIs. That comes in at a 316 batting average and a 370 on base percentage. 1-0. Owings waits back in that off-speed pitch. That one misses the zone low for ball two and... Connor Owings, it's an interesting story for him tonight, playing against his former college teammate. Robertson at first base, both of them were a part of the 2016 Coastal Carolina World Series team. And Owings will take that one outside. That one didn't miss by much, so the count will turn 3-0 now. Yeah, Ryan Miller really flirting with danger here. It's 3-0 count, runners on the corner. And the fastball that time catches his own, so the count now 3-1. and one. You have Chile at third who drew a walk, and then Brian De La Rosa at first who also drew a walk. Lake Erie, they trail 4-1. 3-1 to one. One pitch. That one's low for ball four. So now the bases will be juiced for Kenwell Thomas Rivera. And these are two really contrasting styles that Lake Erie has faced thus far tonight. A guy in Kenny Matthews who throws a lot of strikes, doesn't have the same kind of zip on his fastball that Ryan Miller does, but he was peppering the strike zone. 
pitching to contact for the most part, but really a guy that mixed up his speeds very well. And now Ryan Miller, a guy with more velocity, but he's been all over the place. Kemwell Thomas Rivera now. First pitch swinging. Fouls out one straight back off the netting. Thomas Rivera. He struck out in the first inning, but home has been his place to play. On the year and 21 games at Mercy Health Stadium, he has five doubles, a triple, four home runs, and 12 RBIs. He's produced very well in Avon, Ohio. Neto one's low and away past the catcher. Chile on the move. He will score. Runners will advance. De La Rosa stands at third, and Connor Owing stands at second. Lake Erie cuts the deficit. It's now 4-2. to two. And more importantly, a base hit should be enough to tie this up. And now the wheels are spinning, and we will see some action in that Windy City bullpen again. That is the last thing you want to see if you're a Windy City fan. 1-1. One, one. That one's down low. Morgan tried to pick that with his glove, but doesn't go too far from him. Holds De La Rosa at third, but nevertheless, it's a 2-1 count now on the second baseman, Thomas Rivera. He mentioned a hit past the infield. Could score two and tie things very quickly. Miller to pitcher, 2-1. Thomas Rivera fouls that one out of play, and now the count will be even at two. It's a right-hander warming up for Windy City. And next time there is a visit, that would have to result in Miller being taken out. Two two, and Thomas Rivera under that one in center field. Martinez tracking it. He makes the grab. De La Rosa is going to tag up. Throw to the cutoff man at short. No throw at the plate. De La Rosa will slide in safely. And just like that, Lake Erie only trails by one. It's four to three. And Connor Owings, he will stay at second. Well, I'm a little surprised that Bryn Martinez didn't take a run at De La Rosa there. His throw from center went right to third base. And it didn't look like that was hit deep enough that Martinez wouldn't have had a play at home plate. But Lake Erie will take it because now they're only down by a run. 4-3. Jackson Valera now who's singled in the first. Owings at second. 4-3 game. Valera takes an inside called strike near the knees. Valera extended his hit streak to four games with that single. He's now hit in five of the last six. The 0 1. And Valera takes that fastball. So now the count turns 0 and 2. And if I'm correct, that might be the first time we've seen consecutive strikes thrown by Miller in this inning. The chance to get out of this one was still the lead. 0 2. And Valera stays alive by barely making contact with that one off the netting. Valera. Pro, who's very experienced, comes in with a lot of areas where he's played a lot of teams. Just overall, he's seen the game in many aspects in many places. He's been a really hot hitter here at Mercy Hall Stadium. The 0-2 and a swing and a miss. Miller pumps the fastball through Valera to end the inning, but not before two runs scored by Lake Erie. It was Sean Cheely who scored on a wild pitch. And then Brian De La Rosa scored on the RBI sack five from the bat of Kenwell, Thomas Rivera. We'll head to the top of the third. Lake Erie, they still trail, but it's a lot closer. It's 4-3. to three. Stay tuned. You're watching tonight's game on Flow Sports while listening on Meredith's. <laughs> 